Hi friends, welcome back to All or None Law. Today I'm going to talk about a dengue. Uh, this is a very important topic of discussion and very important topic for your board examinations and even it is important for your uh, clinical practice. Before starting this, I would request you to subscribe to our channel that is All or None Law and please tell your friends to subscribe. You can share our videos with your friends and you can tell them through Facebook, email, Twitter, whichever is convenient to you. Okay guys, and this is a very important topic. Let me start with this, a dengue fever. There are three things in the dengue, what you need to remember is there are three types. One is a dengue fever, and the other one, second one is a dengue hemorrhagic fever, and the third one is um, dengue shock syndrome. So dengue shock syndrome and dengue hemorrhagic fever are very fatal. So you should know how to diagnose a disease and how to manage this disease. This is very fatal and very important. Okay guys, so as you know this is caused by a, a flavivirus, a genus of a single standard non-segmented RNA virus. There are total seven types, of four serotypes are very important for your uh, you need to remember it's a flavivirus and this virus uh, is also responsible for the this is like um, yellow fever and for a, a chikungunya okay uh, infection with one dengue serotype confers a lifelong homotypic immunity to that serotype and a very brief period of partial heterotypic immunity to other serotypes but a person can eventually be infected by all four serotypes. Several serotypes can be in circulation during an epidemic. Dengue is transmitted by mosquitoes of genus Aedes aegypti. Okay, there is another thing you can remember. The most important thing what you should remember is Aedes aegypti. The other mosquito, the other vector um, um, is Aedes uh, albopictus. Okay. So the important thing is, uh, the important point you should remember is the Aedes aegypti is a vector and is caused by flavivirus. Okay, the incubation period is 3 to 14 days, average being uh, 4 to 7 days. Symptoms that begin more than 2 weeks after a person departs from an endemic area are probably not due to dengue. So remember this is a very important point. Okay, how do they present? The pain and other accompanying symptoms may include any of the following. So initially they will present with a pain, fever, okay. So because they don't have the characteristic features of the dengue, it becomes a very difficult for us to diagnose in the initial stages. That's why and it's very fatal condition also. So you need to admit the patient and you need to monitor. Because there is a no specific treatment for the dengue and it's very fatal. So you have to monitor this patient very carefully the other things if the child is big enough they can say headache retro orbital pain general body pain that in the form of arthralgias myalgias nausea and vomiting could be there but diarrhea is rare there is a characteristic rash that is a micropapular rash with a petit cave, um with a blanching can be there and the weakness altered taste sensation anorexia sore throat Mild hemorrhagic manifestations, example, petechiae, bleeding gums, epistaxis, menorrhagia, and hematuria. These are because of uh, thrombocytopenia. The platelet count suddenly drops. It can go below 20,000 also. So very important, that's why they start bleeding. They initially, they come to your office with a sign and symptoms of the fever and nothing else. So once you see, and you should also inquire about the, you should also know about the endemic areas nearby your office. Okay, the rash in the dengue fever is a maculopapular rash or a macular confluent rash over the face, thorax, and the flexor surface with islands of skin sparing. The rash typically begins on the day three and persists for two to three days. Sometimes patient can present you with a rash and the fever. Sometimes. Now the important thing what I want to tell about the fever in these patients is a bi biphasic. What is biphasic means a biphasic fever is nothing but they will have the fever on a day one and they will not have the fever for day two and a day three. Again they may get the fever on a day three or a day four. So this is what the biphasic is. Okay. So remember the biphasic fever is seen in this condition. Okay. Now the, if the patient comes in a dengue fever 
that we have discussed in the three dengue fever, dengue hemorrhagic fever, and dengue shock syndrome. If it comes initially in the dengue fever, the recovery is complete but slow with fatigue and exhaustion often persisting of the fever has subsided. The convulsions phase may last for two weeks. Patients are at risk for the development of dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome at approximately the time of defervescence. Abdominal pain in the conjunction with the restlessness, change in the mental status, hypothermia, and drop in a platelet count could be a very dangerous condition. Okay, so remember this. This is very important points. If a patient of a dengue fever patient it comes to your clinic, comes to your office with a fever, and you're monitoring this patient, and suddenly the fever has dropped, fever, there's no fever, and he's doing fine. So don't think that he's responding very well. It could be due to the uh, he might be going into the um, dengue hemorrhagic fever soon. So you should be very cautious. So how do you monitor? It's not by the clinical science, it's by the laboratory findings. Okay, what you need to monitor? You need to monitor the hemorrhagic uh, platelet count. You need to monitor the packed cell volume. Very important, more than 20% um, platelet count. Uh, uh, sorry, plated count, uh, dropping plated count, and uh, PCV more than 20%. Uh, this is very important science, uh, clinical laboratory findings you should uh, monitor. Of the patients with the dengue hemorrhagic fever, 90% are younger than the 15 years. Initial phase of dengue hemorrhagic fever is similar to that of a dengue fever and other febrile viral illness. Look at this. They have the same clinical features as the other viral illness. That's why it makes you difficult to diagnose this disease. Um, shortly after the fever breaks, sometimes within 24 hours before what I'm talking about, the biphasic, signs of the plasma leakage appears. There's also in this fever, in the dengue fever, or yeah, in dengue hemorrhagic fever, you can see there's a lot of, lots of proteins also. That's what you see, hypoalbuminemia, okay? Signs of plasma leakage appears along with the development of hemorrhagic symptoms such as bleeding from the sites of a trauma, gastrointestinal bleeding, and hematuria. Patients may also present with abdominal pain, vomiting, febrile seizures, and decreased level of consciousness. So look at this. These are patients slowly landing in the uh, very critical conditions. If left untreated, dengue hemorrhagic fever most likely produces dengue shock syndrome. And this is very, my dear friends, very critical conditions are very important you should be very cautious in monitoring these patients. Common symptoms in impending shock include abdominal pain, vomiting, and restlessness. Okay, if they complain of abdominal pain, vomiting, and restlessness, think of he might be landing to dengue hemorrhagic fever. Patient also may have symptoms related to circulatory failure in the form of low BP, that's a hypotension, and it could be a tachycardia, or a bradycardia can be there. The clinical description of a dengue fever is an acute febrile illness of a 2 to 7 days duration associated with a 2 or more followings. Severe and a generalized headache, retro or vital pain, severe myalgias especially of the lower back, arms and the legs, arthralgias usually of the knees and the shoulders and the characteristic rash which I discussed before. Hemorrhaging manifestations like leukopenia, additional finding may include the following Infected conjunctiva, facial flushing, sensitive and specific predictor of a dengue infection, inflamed pharynx, lymphadenopathy, uh, nausea and vomiting, non predictive cough, and um, tachycardia, bradycardia, and a conduction defect. Briefly of the dengue hemorrhagic fever. The findings for the dengue hemorrhagic fever are similar to those of a dengue fever and include the following biphasic fever curve. That is a biphasic fever I discussed before. Um, hemorrhagic findings more pronounced than in a dengue fever. Signs of peritoneal effusion, pleural effusion, or both. Okay. Minimal criteria for the diagnosis of dengue hemorrhagic fever by WHO are fever, hemorrhagic manifestations, example, hemoconcentration that is a raised PCV more than 20%. Thrombocytopenia decreasing platelet count. Positive tonicate test. What is positive tonicate test? What do you do? You just take the cuff of the BP apparatus and you cuff it around the arm and uh, raise the pressure above the systolic pressure and leave it for five, min five minutes and deflate. You will see small, what you call, petit case over the 
what you call them or the arm okay so if they are more than uh, there's finding more than 20 or 15 in a one inch square of area then it could be a then you can say tonic it is this positive but this is not a diagnostic test okay circulatory failure such as signs of vascular permeability that's hypoproteinemia and effusions this is a very important dengue shock syndrome it's findings of dengue shock syndrome include the following hypotension bradycardia paradoxical or tachycardia associated with hypovolemic shock hepatomegaly hypothermia narrow pulse pressure that is less than 20 millimeter of mercury and signs of decreased peripheral perfusion look the initially the patient presented how did he present to your la, your office he presented with the fever that's it that's so one day he has to get the fever and the other day he wasn't having any fever he was doing fine now we initially look at this within a seven days within a span of seven days within a span of four days or five days he landed in a dengue shock syndrome okay of the laboratory criteria for the diagnosis include one or more of the following isolation of a dengue, dengue virus from serum plasma leukocytes and or autopsy samples demonstration of fourfold or a greater change in the reciprocal immunoglobulins igg and igm antibody titers to one or more dengue virus antigens in the paid serum samples demonstration of dengue virus antigen in autopsy tissue via immuno histochemistry or immunofluorescence or in serum samples via enzyme immunoassay detection of viral genomic sequence in autopsy tissue serum and cerebral spinal fluid samples via polymerase chain reaction in a patients with a dengue hemorrhagic fever following may be present increased hematocrit level secondary to plasma extravasations or a third space fluid loss hypoproteinemia prolonged prothrombin time prolonged activation partial thromboplastin time decreased fibrinogen increased amount of fibrin split products he's landing in a dic okay disseminated intravascular coagulation okay so look at this these are the things what you should monitor in a patient of suspected dengue fever daily you need to monitor what is the treatment is support you support treatment like analgesics and please avoid aspirin and sets and the corticosteroids okay as the fluid management is very important okay the second important thing is if he's landing in the platelet count is decreasing then you can give ffp blood transfusion okay so these are the treatments what you should do the most important treatment initially is a support you what the thing what are the things you should monitor in a patient with uh, this dengue is a tachycardia prolonged capillary refill time cool or moderate skin diminished pulse amplitude altered mental state status decreased urine output raising hematocrit narrowed pulse pressure and the hypotension okay guys these are the things you should know about the dengue very important and very big topic for you if you are a resident walking and you get the fever patient with a fever and he's from an endemic area for dengue suspect dengue fever and try to monitor patient very carefully okay guys thank you so much for watching my video and please share our videos with your friends and please rate us and like us thank you so much for watching my video take care